to form a new administration, and I have accepted. And I would just like to remember some of the words of St. Francis of Assisi, which I feel really are particularly apt at this moment. Where there is discord, may we bring harmony. Where there is error, may we bring truth. Where there is doubt, may we bring faith. And where there is despair, may we bring hope. leader, Arthur Scargill, said... The forces of this government are clear. They destroy the coal industry. 
country. I'm the National Union of Mine Workers. <laughs> of April, one month into the strike, the National Union of Mine Workers delegates voted 69 to 54 against holding a national ballot of its members on strike action. So as traditionally happened, the workers in each coalfield area could decide for themselves whether or not to strike. Thus, in Nottinghamshire, Leicestershire, South Derbyshire, North Wales and parts of Lancashire, the miners there kept working. Whereas in South Wales, Scotland, North East England, Kent, I am your chap. Miners there almost universally went on strike. Pickets from these striking areas, also called flying pickets, would travel to the working areas to try and persuade and, if not prevent, the miners there, who they nicknamed scabs, from entering their colliery gates. And yet, the police were deployed to provide protection for the working miners from aggressive picketing. And it was very aggressive at times. There were many incidents, not just of vandalism of the property and possessions of the working miners, but also of brick and stone throwing. The police regularly set up roadblocks to prevent them. <coughs> and I must tell you that what we've got is an attempt to substitute the rule of the mob for the rule of the law. It must not succeed. And I pay tribute to the courage of those miners that have gone into work through the picket lines to the courage of those that will not be intimidated out of their jobs or their future. Since varnish, I've got the text book. Oh. <laughs> hey, too right, too right. Hey now, last time we saw you, you were finishing off your studies, I think. I was. Bristol, then London, university, then work. Work? Work? What as? Journalist. Journalist? I'm a journalist. As is Jackie. Jackie, come meet me, Uncle Bob. That's me. Two one. best mates from school, Mick right, nice and Jim. Pleased to meet you all. Right. Sure. right, right. So, uh, journalist then. Who do you work for? Just, hey, hey now, not the sun. <laughs> Help me, not the sun in sun. No. <laughs> oh, thank God for that. <laughs> so who then? Uh, Mira? Mail? Hey, please tell me it's not the Daily Bloody Telegraph. None of them. Oh. We're what they call freelancers, sort of. We work for an agency that sells our stories to anyone who wants them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so tell me something. What are you doing round here then, eh? Oh, <coughs> hold on. Save the lad the third degree. Let him get settled in. Right. Your interrogation will recommence this tonight in the Foresters. Sixes. How's that sound? Sounds good to me. I need to get off to me mum's. All right. Funny, you didn't mention that when I were in the shop earlier. Ah, it's because you don't know yet. It's a surprise. <laughs> ah. You've not changed, have you? Always did, did things differently, <laughs> did I, Paul? Anyway, should be over at mum. No, 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 no. That's after she's hitting. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, you don't want to be hanging around, so you better get off. Love to see you. You too, Jackie, love. See you then. Bloody hell. Black Macca, look who it is. It's a ghost. Sean, Mark, <coughs> you all right? Ha, never better, eh, Macca, never better. I mean, look at us. Out in fresh air all day with his mining mates. Nothing to do. It's like one long holiday, isn't it, Macca? Aye, it's that one long holiday. Sorry, I wasn't. Sorry? What are you sorry for, Paul? You left, remember? So, it's all this got to do with you. What are you doing here? Well, Jackie, uh, Jackie, this is another old school friend, Sean. Uh, Jackie and I have come up here to work. To work? Ha! <laughs> You'll be all make bloody ones then. 
Work as what? Hey, Paul, you still here? What are you doing? You best get off. Your mum's waiting for you. I was going to explain to Sean why I'm back. Oh, no need to do that. I'll explain it to Sean. I'll even draw some pictures so our Macca gets it here and all. <laughs> I was talking to him. No, Sean. You were talking at him, like you do. You never did like him much, did you? I won't say that. We used to get on, but he changed and now he's, uh, he's... Different! That's words you're looking for! Brains! Education! Different! Bollocks! You see what I mean? <laughs> Look, I'm just trying to find out why he's here. Him and his girlfriend. Girlfriend? I'm not sure she is. And they're journalists. Could have been right about what's been happening for us. Ah, from our side, like. <laughs> well, he didn't quite say that. No, no. Who do we work for? Hey, but it's some. You're wrong. They're independent and they work for themselves. Well, an agency, he said. I'm independent, like. Steady on. The papers are not independent. They are the mouthpieces of capitalism. So you know whose side they're on. We know, Sean. You've told us often enough. So you know we can't trust journalists, <laughs> even if we do know them. Well, thanks for putting us be straight. I mean, heaven forbid we ever get it wrong. Look, all I'm trying to say is we need to be careful. Hey. Anyway, sounds like wagons are in. Right. Time to get back to not working. Strike! 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 What we have seen in the past few weeks is not picketing at all. It's an attempt by force to prevent others from doing what they have a right to do. It is intimidation. It is unlawful assembly. Our duty demands and the national interest requires that we see that violence does not pay and is seen not to pay. in some of these jerseys. They're lovely, proper taste. Oh, I'll bet. But I'm taking care to keep bills down. Two months without his wage. Funds are getting low. So it's uh, naughty jerseys, love. Sorry. Oh, Panda. you don't have to apologise. I shouldn't have got him in, but I always do in spring and old habits, as they say. <laughs> do that. I got a shock last time I saw bank balance. Goodness knows why, if there's not going in, well. Well, let's hope it'll be over soon. You reckon? Not so sure. Seems to me Scargill and her won't be sitting down together any time soon. Oh, you're probably right. Just trying to look on the right side, if there is one. Um, that's 5.45, my love. Sorry I can't make it come to any less. Oh, come on, you've got a living to make. Uh, are you coming to a meeting? Indeed I am. Shut it shop early. Um, do you think it'd be all right if I come? Why wouldn't it be? Well, you know. It'll be fine. See you later, Pablo. Thanks, Brenda. You know why I asked, don't you? Of course I do, but don't worry. You're one of us. Well, I know that, but I've been getting one or two funny looks. I'm afraid you will do, my love. Funny folk give funny looks. <laughs> <laughs> Just try to ignore them. We've got a lot of friends here. And so is your Kenneth. Hey, how about you and me go together? Oh, I like that. Thanks. Shall I call back? Oh, do that, sir. Try to fast. I'll see you then. Oh, and uh, I'll take a couple pounds of the jersey. Oh, you don't have to. Oh, I love them. How much? Oh, call it a pound and enjoy. <coughs> Thank you, sweetheart. I'll see you later. Just got a few things to do in back. Surprise. She's there, I take it. In the back. On the phone, I think. You look well. I am. I meant to write. Really? Yeah, I wanted to explain. But you didn't. No. Sorry. It's all right. Water under the bridge and all that. And you're okay? Couldn't be better. Ken and I are very happy. That's good. Yes, it is. Do you think you'd be up for a pint early doors? I'm eating Uncle Bob, Jim and Mick at the Foresters. Um, well, 
I don't know. It can be a bit awkward depending on who's in. But if he's with me and them, I'll call round, shall I? It's up to you and him. I must be off. Who was that? An old friend who's now married to another old friend. Nice. Neat. Neat. Yeah, I suppose you could say that. Right, come on. Now for the big entrance. I think I'll wait out here until it's safe to go in. Well, go on then. Sure it bite. You don't know that. We'll be with you in a minute. Help yourself to whatever. I will. <coughs> can I help myself to some jerseys? Oh, you can. You certainly can. What the hell? What are you doing here? And it's lovely to see you too, Mother. <coughs> Don't you dare. Don't you bloody dare, Paul Turner. No warning, no phone call, no nothing. Explain. I wanted to surprise you. You know me. Oh, I do. I do. Might not remember what you look like. <laughs> oh, come here. Oh, I wish you'd have said I'd have got things ready. Which is why I didn't. I imagined you'd have enough on. Don't give me that, Paul Turner. I've not had enough on, as you put it, for the past six months, in which time there's been three short phone calls and a Christmas card from France. What do you do for a living? Right. Not to your mother, you don't. <laughs> no, sorry. Oh, come here, don't be. Oh, you've your own life to lead. So, what's this? Holiday? No, no, quite the opposite actually. It's work. The agency sent me up here to write about the strike. You? Right. Don't tell me. Journalists aren't flavour of the month up here. Exactly. People think the papers are in Thatcher's back pocket. Well, I'm back. <laughs> I thought as much. But I'm a bit different. Oh, I'll say. I mean, I'm a different sort of journalist. I work for an agency, so I'm a bit more independent. So, hopefully. Oh, well, we'll see, shall we? Any road, your room's still as it was. And if I give you a key, you can go and get unpacked. Actually, I won't be needing it. Uh, the agency's booked me, or rather us, into a hotel in Rotherham. I don't uh, You're kidding me. Oh, yeah. Who's us? Oh, well, uh, I've got a friend with me, Jackie. She's a colleague. She and I work for the same agency. A colleague? <laughs> and where is she, this colleague? She's just outside. Well, what's she doing there? Well, I thought I'd, you know, come and explain things first. Oh, in case your dear old mother threw an embarrassing wobbler. No, just... The... Oh, you're just like your father. He always had to go twice round houses before he opened door. <coughs> go and get her if, for God's sake, she'll wonder what's gone off. Jackie. Will you come in and meet me, Mum? Mum, Jackie, Jackie, me Mum. I'm pleased to meet you, Mrs Turner. Oh, the same here, my love. You're really welcome. I wish you told me you were coming. Oh, well, that's poor for you. Never does things the usual way. Exactly. See, it's not only me. <coughs> and you in hotel, I'll never forgive you. There's a reason for that, Mum. The agency know I've got connections in. Connections? I'll say. Friends, family. They want me to use my local knowledge, but still remain independent. That's what our agency prides its work on. Knowledge, not bias. Right. There we are then. Hotel it is. And we need to check in. Thanks for understanding, Mum. Well, before you go, did this agency say anything about not being able to share a pie and some jerseys with one of your close connections? I don't think jerseys were mentioned. Good. I'll see you back here at seven. <coughs> No, make it half past. Have a meeting to go to. A meeting? What about? We're going to have our own Women Against Pit Closures group. We're setting it up tonight. Can I come? Um, not sure. I think you stick out like a sore thumb. Well, what about me? I'd be really interested. I'm a woman and against the pit closures. I don't see why not. They can only say no, can't they? Right, I'll see you later. You missed me. Me? Missed you? Don't be daft. Do you think I'm soft or something? Go on, get off. I'm a busy woman. See you then.
came to office with one deliberate intent to change Britain from a dependent to a self-reliant society, from a give-it-to-me to a do-it-yourself nation, a get-up-and-go instead of a sit-back-and-wait-for-it-Britain. getting nowhere. What I say, we're getting nowhere. We're not stopping the wagon, so we're not stopping the coal. So the steel plant down in Scumfork just keeps going. We make a lot of bloody noise, but get bloody nowhere. We've got to stick to us guns, like Arthur says. Oh, Arthur says a lot. What's that supposed to mean? Exactly what I said. Arthur says a lot. The words don't stop wagon drivers driving from picket lines. Ah, your mine is in the Knox Coalfield, in South Derbyshire, from working. Ah, the note but scabs, eh, Macker? Aye, no but scabs. But don't you agree about that either? Thinking of going back, are you? Going back? Don't be a ruddy pillock all your life, Sean. Of course we're not going back. We'll stick together because all us do. But that don't mean that I have to like it. Now listen. Eh? Hey. Well, let's just leave it there. Shall we? But come on, we need to think uh, about uh, this. Why don't you and Albert Einstein said over there, get on with your game of dominoes and let us sip our pints in peace. Alright. Look, Sean. Sure. It says leave it, alright. You're right, though. He is a pillock. Some of them are. A pair of. You know, talking to them in Nottinghamshire. I was thinking the other day, if Coldball was shutting them down and keeping us open, I'd have thought twice about giving up the wage. Put yourself in their shoes. They've got families to feed and all. Spow you, Jim. I keep them thoughts to yourself. Walls of ears, there's a couple of thick bricks over there I'd love to spread them Ah, you're not wrong, lad. Bob, something <laughs> gone here, Jim. Ah, uh, no need to tell me. I were in the same class as him for 11 years, remember? He didn't show us God much then. He's not changed since. <laughs> when I think back, all I can hear is him spouting. Hey, I'd have been a rocket scientist if it weren't for him. <laughs> so you blame him for your lack of educational achievement then? <laughs> no, I suppose you're right, that would me. Didn't seem like much point in trying too hard. Not when you're going to end up down pit. Aye, and now look at us. No pit and now else. Now you're Paul, you see. He's always going to make something of himself. Speak of the devil. We're company. All right. All right. You just wait till our car marks over there and see what company. Oh, hello, my love. Good to oh. see you back. Your mum never said. Ah, she didn't know. Well, you little devil. Anyway, lovely to see you. What are you having? You two, Kenny, sorry. He wasn't ignoring you. Just a bit taken aback by this young man. And you, young friends. Uh, what can I get you, my love? Just a juice, please. Orange? Orangey tears. And lads? Pints please, Jonna. Bitter. Aye. Oh, come on, you're not serving him, are you? He's a copper. I beg your pardon, Sean Wilson. You'll keep a civil tongue in your head. I'll serve who I like. Kenneth's been drinking in it for years, and he's welcome. So, either burn it or leave. Well, I don't want to cause any bother. You're not, Kenneth. He is. Ignore him. Most of us try to. How much, Joan? They were on me, love. Come here, old presents. No, please. They can be on expenses. Expenses? Well, if you must. Mine's a snowball. <laughs> Just joking. Uh, that can be one eight to five, then, please. Anything, anything else? Snaps? Yeah. Uh, it's it's on expenses. Oh, I'll be here. Oh, yeah. I was just doing that. <laughs> hey, you lot, come and gather around me, all right? Jackie, right. take a seat. Oh, well, well, get in there. Get in yeah. there. Yeah. 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 Welcome hey, back hey, home, son. Welcome back home. And congratulations. And tell us. Oh, you've got no idea how good that tastes. You should see what passed for a pint of bitter down in London. I've heard it tastes like pop. You what? Eh? Pop. P.O.P. Right, a piss. What's your mouth that Bob Watkins? This is a respectable farm. Sorry, me love, he's got no manners. It's fine, I've heard words. What? Language or jokes? <laughs> <laughs> so, you 
all right, then, Ken? Ah, uh, as well as, you know. Uh, I can imagine. Not easy for you. Or you. I still can't believe it is as it is. None of us can. Us? By us, you mean the other lads in the forts? Exactly. None of us joined South Yorkshire Police for this. You mean you thought you'd be fighting crime, not the mines? Exactly. It's nicely put. Well, that is his job. Words. And words make it the man. Or in my case, I hope, a living. So, uh, you like it then? Aye, oh, I like it. And sometimes it's a bit boring. Well, not boring, just frustrating. Why? Well, I like to write about what I care about. And if I can't, it's frustrating. Like a couple of months back, I got sent to this chocolate box village in Arkansas. Where a group of well heeled locals were complaining about the parish council's plans to build a small estate of family houses on the edge of the village. They had this meeting, and when I got there, they looked at me as if I turned up on the bottom of someone's shoe. I think they're expecting someone from Horse and Hound. <laughs> anyway, there they are, up in arms about these houses, and I suspect who might move into them saying they'd spoil the view, increase the traffic, disturb all the peace and quiet they'd always had, etc, etc. And Mrs. Fortescue Smythe is giving her all from amongst the flowers. <laughs> and I'm thinking, for God's sake, get a bloody life. If you really want a decent view, move up to the top floor of a tower block in Hyde Park. <laughs> There's millions of people desperate for a decent place to live. And all she and her pals care about is what they can see from their summer house over the rim of a G&T. But I can't say that in the actual copy I write, in the article I mean. I have to sound impartial, neutral. He's <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 not oh, true! Oh, As he ever said, he still talk for England here, Jackie. I'm Scotland, Ireland and Wales, so before he gets started again, I'd best be off. I asked your mum if I could go with her to that meeting you did that day. Really? Look, Sharon, my wife's going. Aye, Tracy too. Ah, there's many going. Good thing, I reckon. I'll be going. See you later, Paul. See you later, Paul. Oh, nice lass. So, uh, you and her? Uh, just good friends, Uncle Bob? Oh, yes. <laughs> hey, lad, you could do worse. I could. You have. Hey, uh, <laughs> just a joke. <laughs> hey, Ken, can I have a quick word? Of course. It's about what I said earlier. It's not personal. Really? Really, it's just that you're a copper, so you're on the other side. You have to be, and that's your job. <coughs> Someone like this, you're on one side or other. You can't be sitting on the fence. There isn't one. Look, you're right about the job, but I'm not paid to be against the miners, against the strike, against anything or anybody. I'm paid to keep the peace, stop people breaking the law, and the rest of them if they do. You know that, sure. You don't need me to tell you that. I'll tell you something I do know, Ken. I know that sometimes the law's not right, not fair. I know that sometimes the people in power use the laws to keep what's theirs, however they got it, and to stop working people like us from getting what they deserve. They've done it before and they're doing it now. I'm sorry to say it, but they've got you and your mates doing the dirty work. All right, Sean, lay off. Man's just come here for a drink like rest of us, <coughs> not a lecture. It's all right, Bob, I don't mind. Look, Sean. Let me put it to you another way. If a bloke stands in the street and throws a brick at a van because he's not like the look of a driver or what he's got in his van, we'd arrest him. You'd want us to, wouldn't you? Because he's breaking the law. So if a picket throws a brick at a bloke driving a coke wagon, what's the difference? It's not the same. One's personal and one's political. Oh! Since when's chucking a brick through somebody's window been political? You know what I mean, Bob. No. No, I don't. I know what you think you mean, Sean, but I don't agree with it. There's many of us who don't. Could be an ordinary bloke in that cab. Wife, kids. He's just doing his job. But by doing his job, he's helping them put us out of ours. He's on their side. No, he's not. Look, does it have to be like this? Do you have to be like this? Yes, I do. We do. That's not my choice. Our choice. It's theirs. Thatcher's. So I'm sorry, Ken, but you're either with us or you're against us. Anyway, I'm off to a union meeting. Oh, shit. I do enjoy a good chat. And as I say, Ken, don't take it personal. Don't take offence. I've not. Like you said, there ain't none. Macca, we're off. I haven't finished my bleeding bite yet. I don't care. I said we're going. 
Investment banker, rich, works in London, owns a pile in Warwickshire, went to Cambridge, private school, the lot. And you'd have thought you were born in a different country, on a different planet. And I'm thinking, were you born different? Or was it just the way you were brought up? What you'd seen, where you'd been? Uh, so, uh, what did you decide then? That I didn't know. But it's not just him, it's all of us. Me, you, Sean. Suppose we swap places. <laughs> what, me? Me, Jim? Not really <laughs> likely. <Jim. laughs> but if we could... If you were me, and I were you, do you think I'd see the world the same as you? Would the stars shine just as bright for you? Would you love the night just like I do? Would this cloud the sky be just the same? Your shade of summer blue. If you were me, and I were you. If you try to see through others' eyes, down inside their shoes, understand the winners. Those that always do But if you've not been where they have been If you've not seen what they have seen It's hard to see the reason For the past that others choose So I think like me And you think like you They've been raised like me in my world. Surely they would have realized by now. Life is a competition. It's about being one step ahead of the rest, making your way to the top. Why can't they see what it's like to be me? Why can't they see what it's like to be me? If you were me, and I were you, would you understand this strike the way I do? Would you see that when he throws that brick? It's really the last choice. It's the only way he knows to get the world to hear his voice. If you were me, and I were you. If you were me, and I were you. Would you understand our actions like I do? Would you do your best to keep the peace, uphold the rule of law, protect that driver, shield that scab, do the job you signed up for? If you were me, and I were you, Try to see through others' eyes, stand beside their shoes, to understand the winners and those that always lose. But if you've not been where they have been, if you've not seen what they have seen, it's hard to see the reasons for the paths that others choose. So I think like me. And you think like you. I just don't understand them. How can they see that it's not just about profit or loss? It's about communities, a way of life. I 
just don't understand them. Why can't they see how business, industry works? They're the bottom line and it can't be read. If they'd lived here, been brought up here, then perhaps they'd get it. They'd see how we all pull together and take care of each other. If you were me, and I were you, would you understand this world the way I do? Would you feel that you were born to rule, born to lead the way? Would you crave the very best in life and create the wealth to pay? If you were me, and I were you,
because where I come from, people just don't understand. And uh, where do you come from, love, if you don't mind me asking? Well, I live in London at the moment, but originally I'm from Somerset. I'm a farmer's daughter. So you don't even mind in stock then? No, my dad's a poultry farmer, so I suppose you could say I come from chicken stock. <laughs> <laughs> well, wherever it is you're from, love, Jackie, isn't it? You're welcome. Thank <coughs> you. Do you mind if I take some notes? It's all right by me. Do we mind, girls? <laughs> you go ahead, mind you. If any of you <coughs> say anything <laughs> worth writing down, it'll be a first. <laughs> <laughs> now, as Wendy says, we need to sort out a committee to pull things together. Any volunteers? Who's going to set us off? Well, as it was my suggestion, I'd better be one, eh? Put my money where my mouth is. <coughs> need a fair few quid to do that then, eh? <laughs> Cheeky bugger! <laughs> hey! We've been uh, recorded, eh, Jackie? Yes. How do you spell bugger? Uh, T A A T C H E R. Right, who's next for the committee? Well, I will be if you think it's all right. I know I've no direct connection with Pitt since my Stuart died, but well, I've lived here all my life and I want to help. You need no more reason than who you are, Brenda Turner. Dushy girls. No. Right, that's two. Three with me if you'll have me. Thank you. Oh, and there's Donna, I can see. That's four. Now, we need one more so it's an odd number. Hang on. Why do we need an odd number? In case we disagree about something. That way, there's always a majority. What's she on about? Look, just because we're women and we're from round here doesn't mean we can't do this properly, eh? What do you think, Jackie? I think women can do anything they set their minds to. You know what, love? I'm liking you more and more. <laughs> now, we need one more. Well, if no one objects, <clears throat> I'd like to volunteer. Why should anyone object? Well... Oh, come on! We all know her husband's a copper. And so? Look, like my Sean says, you're either on one side or the other. And if her husband's a copper, where does that leave her? Where it's always left her, with a mind of her own. Hey, how do you feel about a woman with a mind of her own, eh, Donna? Or do you have to ask your Sean first? <laughs> oh, <laughs> honestly, if Ken Bean and the is going to be a problem, then please, let's leave it. Look, your husband's a policeman, not you. And your Kenneth is a good man. Most of us have known him since he were knee eye to a grasshopper, eh? <laughs> Look, I do not want to be awkward. Ah, make the change. Look, shut up. Do you know how things are with the police? And it could get worse. Well, let's cross that bridge if we it come to it, eh? For the moment, Sharon is on the committee. Agreed. So, first job done. Right. Anything else? Uh, well, I don't know what you think. But how about us having a raffle at welfare tomorrow night? We'll raise some funds, get us started. If I put a couple of boxes, hampers like, together, it'd be a start. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. That's a good idea, Brenda. Put some jerseys in, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. Agreed? That's settled then. Let me know if you need a hand, Brenda. Right. First job done. Now, committee meeting. We'll sort it out uh, later. Later tonight. That's it tonight then, girls. Unless there's anything else? No? Good night, all. See you tomorrow. And thank you for coming. Silverton Women Against Pit Closures is up and running. <laughs> Just my house, but what we jack and dog. Jack more than dog, to be honest. But How about we... shop? We can use back room. Sunday morning. Oh, it's that old chill. Meeting it is then. <laughs> more there than the vicar. <laughs> what time? Oh, ten o'clock. Make it half ten. My Sean likes a lion and a proper cooked breakfast on a Sunday morning. Tell him to make his own. We burn the house down. Oh, half ten it is then. Good. Right, I'm off. Teach do. 
Same here. See you tomorrow, ladies. Pat, Brenda, thanks for speaking up. Not a problem, Sharon. I bet things aren't easy at the moment. They're not. Ken hates it, as do most of them. They all get tired with the same brush no matter how fair they try to be when they follow their orders. I can imagine, Sharon, my darling, would it seem for pickets to be fair if you were to read, if you were to believe everything you read? Every last one of them some sort of demented Rambo, whereas you and we know most of them are as soft as a brush. Decent men caught up in something they never wanted. So don't worry, we know each other well enough to sort out any problems. I certainly hope so, Brenda, I really do. Anyway, best get off. Ken's gone for a drink with your Paul. I said I'd put tea on, he's had a long day. Thanks again, the two of you, it really means a lot. No, thank you, Shan. It took some bottle coming to the meeting, let alone standing for committee. Hey, are you seeing tomorrow night? I am, we all are, and we've a surprise guest. Oh, who's oh, that? Hey, it's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> well, I for one can't wait. <laughs> well, I better get off then. Tea and rehearsal, don't want to let you all down. Oh, you couldn't let us down if you tried, <laughs> Wait till you wear them, Jackie. This will give you something to write about. I'm looking forward to it. Sharon, I wonder, could we meet up sometime? I'd love to talk to you about all of this. Yeah, I think that'd be all right. Certainly is with me, but I'd want Ken to know. Of course. See you tomorrow night, perhaps? Yes, tomorrow. Night all. Oh, she's a grand lass. And what a voice. It should be a good night tomorrow night. <laughs> they could all do we one. Lift the spirits. Whichever way you look at it, times are grim. And it's worse for some than others. Oh, sometimes I feel a bit guilty that I've got shot to keep me going. Don't be so daft, Brenda. None of this is of your choosing or any honours, for that matter. All we can do is make best of a bad job. Oh, I know. Hey, that's just what my Stuart would have said. Oh, bless him. He were a good man, her, Stuart, Jackie. A real good man. You must still miss him terribly, Blender. Every day, every hour of every day, if truth be told, I can't pretend it's easy on my own. Please don't say anything to Paul, Jackie. I don't want him worry. I won't, promise. All the same, it is a pity he couldn't get a job somewhere near her. Oh, I wouldn't want that, Pat. Not for him to take work just to be near me. I want him to find his own way. Find his own life. But yeah, with him not here and, and Stuart gone, it's hard to feel like I've got a family, which is what always kept me going. It's how life was, why life was. Now I just go from day to day doing what you do without quite knowing why, where it's going. I was thinking the other day, you'll have to think this is daft, but I'm like this place Silverton would be. If pit closed, oh, we'd all still be here. We'd all still be getting up in the morning, making breakfast, taking kids to school, dogs for walks, cutting grass, trimming privets. <laughs> but for what? Because what keeps us together, gives us a reason to be here, is the pit. And without the pit, there'd be no reason for us to be here. And I sometimes feel the same about me. Oh, Jackie, my love, we've only just met, and here I am, talking bloody nonsense. Not at all, this is... Brenda, <coughs> please don't say that. I think what you've just said is <coughs> profound. I can see why Paul's so proud of you. Proud? Oh, come here. Oh, oh, thank you. Right, come on, let's get tea sorted. <laughs> And I'll give you a ring later, so it's out raffle. Right. Give Paul my best. Hey, lovely to meet you, Sharon, Jackie. <laughs> and have you here with us? Can't think of anywhere I'd rather be. Oh. <laughs> Come on, this jersey's to scream. A woman's work. Mr. 
Secretary, in your estimation, where are we with the strike? Well, Prime Minister, dare I say it, I am, we are quite optimistic. And as you know, optimism is not a common characteristic in the upper echelons of the civil service. So let me be a touch more circumspect and say that I, we, are not pessimistic. And your reasoning? Well, Prime Minister, and I am sure what I say will come as no surprise to you. Circumstances have conspired to create a rather favourable situation for the National Coal Board and, by implication, for the government. Coal stocks are high. Some areas continue to work. Summer approaches, thus demand fuel for. Other key unions are reluctant to join the NUM in light of the latter's refusal to hold a national ballot the absence of which allows the public, encouraged by the majority of the press, to question the strike's legitimacy. Violent picketing discourages public support. To be frank, Prime Minister, one would have been hard-pressed to have planned it better. Whereas, of course, contrary to what some have suggested, we didn't in any way whatsoever. The trick, however, is to use the circumstances in which one finds oneself to achieve one's long-term goals. I agree with your summary of the present position. We must, however, be ever on our guard. The NUM destroyed Edward Heath in 1972 and 1974. That will not happen to me. Well, certainly not, Prime Minister, certainly not. Whilst not responsible for the manner of the strike's beginnings, we must, we will, decide how it ends. Indeed, we will, Prime Minister. Indeed, you will. <laughs> stop meeting like this. We did remember, four years ago. Time flies. When you're having fun. And are you? Having fun? Do you care? Yes. Then I am, or as much as anyone round here at the moment. Yeah, I can understand that. Can you, Paul? Can you really? Four years away and you can still understand. Yes, I think I can. Really? What's wrong, Sharon? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong is you have to ask. What's wrong? I don't get it. Oh, no, I know you don't. Just like I never got the promised phone calls, the promised letters, the invitations to come to Bristol so we'd still <coughs> be together so things didn't change. You remember all that? Yes. Then why can't you see what's wrong, what hurt, what still hurts? I suppose I thought it was all in the past. You're with Ken, settled here, and I'm... You're what? With Jackie. Jackie? No! Why does everyone... No! Jackie's just a friend. A good friend. The best. But just a friend. And does she think that? Of course. I mean, yeah, I think so. I mean, she's never said any different. You know, for such a bright look, there's a lot you don't know about women. Tell me about it. They're a mystery to me. You include me in that? Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> Look, what I was trying to say is, I'm everything you're not. I'm on my own, not settled, just wandering, I suppose. And so you wandered back here. Well, yes, but you make it sound like it was an accident. And it clearly wasn't. I decided it'd be okay. Okay? Yes, I thought I'd be able to see the place, the people differently, objectively, through a journalist's eyes. But it's odd. On the picket line, I thought, yes, I can do this. Then, as I stood outside the shop earlier, I realised it wasn't always going to be like that. I could feel the memory stirring, the past nudging me. Then I saw you. Just stop there. Sharon, I... I said just stop there. I don't want to hear it, Paul. Whatever it was, whatever it is you think you want to say, don't say it. I've told you how I felt. Perhaps I shouldn't have. 
but I've wanted to say it for so long. But it's gone. It's the past. Leave it there, please. Okay, I will. Or rather, won't say it. Promise. Don't promise, Paul. Just do it. Okay, sorry. I'm going. Can I wonder where I am? Yeah. Sharon. Paul, you first. I was going to say, it's good to see you. Yeah, I know. I know. I never thought I'd feel the way I do I'm not sure of what to think or what to say As she sat there just beside me Something stirred inside of me I didn't think that I would feel what I feel
No! It's just a pair of plums. <laughs> you learn that one, you learn that one, did you? You learn that one, well, here's another. How do you confuse a Barnsley coal miner? I don't know. How do you confuse a Barnsley coal miner? You show him a row of shovels and say, take your pick. <laughs> <laughs> take your pick. Hey, there's someone else in Barnow, aren't they? I mean, they say that we talk funny. Have you heard them? It's like a foreign language, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, here's another. Do you hear about the Barnsley man? He goes to the vet. He says to the vet, I've come about me cat. Vet says, is it a Tom? He says, no, I brought it with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, a Barnsley Yoga Club. So yoga instructor, she tells up lasses, she says, right, girls, hands on shoulders, and they all go. Right, girls, hands on knees, and they all go. Right, girls, hands on thighs, and they all go. <laughs> So, moving along for the rest of the evening's entertainment, please welcome to the stage Silverton's answer to Banana Rama, the Supremes, and the Bangles. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, give a huge response to the Silverton!
Right, boys have come, so we're going to take a break for 20 minutes, but there is a raffle tonight. All proceeds go to the Silverton Women against pit closures. Two wampers to win, well worth a flutter, all in a good cause. Now, you might notice you've got on your programmes a number at the bottom, right? That's for the raffle. So if you haven't got a programme, you need to get one. You need to be in it to win it. <laughs> what number have you got, love? Don't be scared, it's a fourth world break. I know I'm a coal man, I don't mean I haven't read a book on theatre, all right? <laughs> what number have you got? Wait, you got a number, love? 53. Not going to win, love. Not going to win. <laughs> anyway, best of luck to you. You're all laughing. They do say laughter is the best medicine, unless you're asthmatic, in which case it's salbutamol. <laughs> so, we'll be back in 20 minutes. I'll see you in 20. All right? 20 minutes, everyone. I'll see you soon. <laughs> Right, do we all have a good drink? Did we get <laughs> do you get to go to the toilet? Oh, don't answer that, don't answer that. Right, so I suppose we better announce the winners of tonight's raffle. All right, the raffle to raise money for women against Silverton pit closures. Could we have two new members of the women's committee come to the stage to announce the winners? Wendy, go ahead. Come on up, give them a round of applause, please. Right, we're all right, right, so the first winner of tonight's raffle is... One, three, nine. One, three, nine. One, three, nine. Where are you, one, three, nine? Hey! Right at the back. We'll send it out to you, folks. Out you go. And the second winner is... One, one, two! Stick your hand up, one, one, two! Congratulations to tonight's winners, whose make of fortune is your bad luck, but that is how life goes. So, would you like Wendy and Donna to say a few words? Yeah! Wendy, Donna, you heard him. Right, good evening all, and thank you for the way you all got behind this raffle. This group is a way for us women to get organised so that we can help each other and our families get through this strike. We all know times are difficult, so if we can help each other, particularly, I'm sure you'll agree, those with young kids, then that's a good thing to do. The committee are meeting again tomorrow, so as soon as we've got things organised, we'll make sure to let you know. Till then, enjoy the rest of your night. Wendy, Donna, thank you, and you know, ladies and gentlemen. Right, moving on with the rest of the evening's entertainment. Please give it up again for the wonderful Silverton!
We're going to take a short break now while we get set up for the bingo. I'll see you in a bit. Stuart passed. I lost the appetite, I suppose. And when you've not done it for a while, well, your confidence starts to go. But I have to say, that felt good once I got going. Good is an understatement. Brilliant, boy. Right. Hey, old big sis. You've lost, not lost it, you know. It took me right back. I could feel years dropping off me. Hey, and I could feel something dropping off and all. I don't think it were years. Felt more like my knees. <laughs> She was great. Always is. And your mum, Paul. It's great to hear her voice again. It was. Is. Thanks, Sharon. She, she wouldn't have done it if you hadn't pushed it. Can I get you two a drink? Uh, no, you can't. It's my shout. Fine. Uh, just a half. I, I've got some coffee to finish later. You just take care of Dusty Springfield here. That was... Um, um, yeah, you first. I was going to say, that was fantastic, and a bit weird. Weird? Thanks. No, not the song, and certainly not the singing. No, it was me. It felt like the last four years had never happened. I could never left. Well, you did. And they have. Things are different here, for everyone. You need to catch up. The past is the past and all that. I know, I know, and I know I said I wouldn't, but I'd like to talk it over, work out what happened. Why? Nothing will change. Sleeping dogs, etc. Oh, look, Paul, now is certainly not the time or place to be talking about things like dates. Another time, maybe? Maybe. I look forward to it. To what? Oh, the next performance. <laughs> right. Cheers. Right, size down for a full house. Oh, now for a hey. spot of bingo, two little ducks and all that. Got your cards, get ready. Oi, 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 oi! Oi, back it. Who gave you permission to go anywhere? I don't like bingo. Yeah, you do. You like? Yeah. Everyone loves bingo. Get this out of that now. <laughs> right, eyes down, purple out. Here we go. <coughs> and the first number tonight is... Two chubby silver tones, 88. <laughs> <laughs> One short of everyone's favourite mutually pleasing number, that's a 68. <laughs> <laughs> number 10, Dragon's Den. Throughout April and May, the tension built. In May, the Orgreave cooking plant became a focus for the strike. Orgreave Colliery had closed in 1981. The coking plant took in coal from other mines, turned it into coke and sent it to the steel plant at Scunthorpe. In May, May, British Steel ordered a large amount of coal from Poland and arranged with non-unionised transport firms to deliver it to Orgreave. They put it in order for 5,000 tonnes of top quality steel to be delivered from Orgreave to Scunthorpe. However, on May the 22nd, a sympathetic steel worker informed the Barnsley Miners' Union of these plans. And on May the 23rd, picketing began in earnest. Over the next days, the tension mounted. On Friday, June the 15th, a mine worker at Kellingley Colliery was struck by a trailer and killed while picketing at Ferrybridge Power Station. And at a rally in Wakefield on Sunday, the 17th of June, Arthur Scargill made a plea for the Orgreave plant to be closed by mass picketing. On the morning of Monday, the 18th of June, around 8,000 pickets gathered there to be met by 5,000 police. I came here to report on a strike, but what I saw today it was more like an episode from the war. It was a battle. The Battle of Aubrey. Some would argue not a battle at all. It was a rout.
We knew from the very start it was different. They'd always kept us pickets away from the coat wagons, but today, today we're different. When we arrived in the morning, <coughs> there were more police than we'd ever seen before. They led us through, showed us where to go, into the field over by the coat works. There were police, about 15 deep with riot shields at Bournemouth Field. And when the coat wagons arrived on the road behind, we met. They shoved. We, we shoved back. back. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. charged with violent disorder and that night the BBC News covered the day's events. Surged forward against the riot shields. 
Policemen fought with truncheons under a barrage of stones and missiles. By mid-morning, the picketing had turned to rioting. The police hadn't lost ground, but more riot squads were needed as reinforcements in the front line as the pressure increased. Eventually, senior officers ordered in the mounted police to disperse the miners. A gap opened, and the horses galloped in. Police horses are the most feared weapon in the present armory. But it's the riot squads that follow up to make the arrests. And today, on the fields around Orgreave, the police became involved in some of the most vicious hand-to-hand -hand fighting of the entire miners' dispute. The attacks on individual policemen were horrific. The police commanders said it was a marvel that no one was killed. The battle lasted throughout the morning. And in all, police made over a hundred arrests as the scuffles ebbed and flowed. At all times, the police were in control, but under tremendous pressure. There was never anything peaceful about the frontline confrontation. It appeared to be a conscious decision to use any method to stop the coke lorries. Turn the bloody thing off! Uh, the lion saws, they twisted it, made it out like we started, but not them! I don't bloody believe this! It were the horses, the horses that made the difference. But looking at that, watching and listening to it, you wouldn't get that now, would you? I mean, would you? But, but why, why, Paul, why? How, how can they? It's the BBC, don't they just tell you what happened? You'd like to think so, but they don't. Or at least some of us don't think they do. Well, things either happen or they don't. The pictures are what happened. They can't change that, can they? No, they can't, but the pictures they show, the order in which they show them, and what they present as they show them are in your hands. Or at least the editor's hands. They can present stuff as they like. Or as their bosses like. Exactly. Politicians do it all the time. They take the same events and tell different stories, depending on what side they're on. What they want us all to believe. Well, we all see things differently, I suppose. But this is the BBC. The BBC! They're not supposed to be on anybody's side. Hey, a TV Thought we'd find you here. She needed a bit of company. Oh, not right. surprised. How sure? We heard he was arrested. He was. He's in the police station in Rotherham. And? They wouldn't let me see him on his own. They wouldn't let me touch him even. He looked so frightened. Oh, Donna, look. Come on. Sit down. It'll be all right. You're among friends. Get rid of someone. Sean says he kept asking about Magga. I couldn't tell him. How is he? Michael? Well, when we last went round to the hospital, he'd not yet come to. His mum and dad were with him, though, so... Sean said it was Ken. Sharon's Ken that hit him. Maka, that is. Said he saw him. Kenneth? Never! That's what my Sean said. You heard him, didn't you, Karen? He did. Sean said that. Oh, Kenneth! Surely not. I'm not sure Sean was there when whatever happened to Maka happened. When I got there, Ken was there with two of the policemen. It seemed to me that Ken was trying to help him. That's not what my Sean said. Look, look, please. We don't know yet. So let's not assume anything until we do. The most important thing is that young Mark gets better and Sean gets home. Meanwhile, let's try to be useful. If we can find out who's most in need of our help after what's happened today, then we can get started to do just that. How about the committee meet tomorrow morning, or at least those of us that can? Can we come to the shop, Brenda, say oh, 10 o'clock? More than welcome. I'll shop for an hour. No need. I'll keep it open if you'd like. Really? You're sure? Definitely. It'll be a change to do something different. Oh, right. You're on then. 10 o'clock it is. Good. See you then. Now, I for one need to get off, and they'll be wanting to lock up here. Night all. Come on, Donna. Let's get you home. <coughs> Brenda, Paul, Jackie, I've been thinking, perhaps we need to have a word with Sharon and Ken. Think they need to know what Donna said tonight. Decide what they want to say, eh? I agree. We can do that, can't we, Jackie? Of course. Good. See you tomorrow, Brenda. I don't like the look of this. 
But if Paul was right and Ken was only trying to help, surely... Oh, yes, you'd like to believe that, Jackie. But round here, well, in fact, everywhere, mud sticks and truth gets buried in it. Come on, Paul. Just give me a We're minute. down the welfare. And? And we thought we'd drop in and let you know how things are going. Thanks. Though I think I can't imagine. As Macca, the last asshole has been put in an ambulance, unconscious. He still is, apparently, in hospital. Oh, poor Mark. His mum and dad must be worried to see. They're with him, Mick said. Well, let's hope there's better news tomorrow, eh? Yeah. There's something else, isn't there? Yeah, there is. Sean's still in custody, in Rotherham. <coughs> Donna came back from seeing him and... And what? And she said it was... She said Sean told her it was Ken that hit Macca. She said, what? Ken, did you hear that? Yes, and I'm not surprised if I'm honest. I've expected this would happen. But she's wrong, surely. You need to ask. I should hope not. No, of course I don't. And neither do we, but unfortunately... With feelings as they are, particularly after the way it's being shown on the TV news, a lot of people are angry enough to believe anything. But why would Sean say it was you, Ken? Because he saw me there after Mac had been hit. I mean, I tried to help him. And you saw that, Paul. I did. And were those two that were there the ones that hit him? It's just... Just leave it for the time being. But if they were... Ken said he wants to leave it, Paul, so leave it. You can trust us. Can we? I'm not sure I know who I can trust anymore. I'm sick of the sideways glances, the whispers. Nothing to my face, of course. You remember the last time we sang in the welfare? It was all smiles and well dones. But as time's gone on, it's all gone downhill and it makes me bloody angry. Sharon, calm down. But, but Paul, Jackie, I think it's best you go. Thanks for coming though, I know you meant well. Sharon, there's a meeting tomorrow morning. I don't know whether... I'll be there. It's one of my days <clears throat> off. Shall I call round and we can go together? No need. I don't need my hand holding. Sharon? Jackie's only trying to help. Yes, I'm sure. Sorry, I have things to do. Sorry, she's taking it hard. 
No need to apologise, Ken. It must be really difficult. It has, but it is. And after today, it's not going to get any easier. As I say, if there's anything I can do to help, just ask. Swap jobs? <laughs> no, we'll be fine, honest. You two need to get off. Say hi to your mum. I will. Take care. Let's go for a pint soon, eh? Let's see how things turn out first. Come on, see you later. Just. Are you all right? No, I'm not. Nowhere near. If I could leave tomorrow, I would. What do you mean? I mean, leave Silverton. I never thought I'd hear myself say that. Well, that's a bit extreme, love. But in time, things will settle down. You know what people are like. I know exactly what people are like, and that's what bothers me. So why go tomorrow morning? Because I'm not going to give in. I'm not going to hide away, and you shouldn't either. You've done nothing wrong. Except wear the wrong uniform, which is enough for some. But not for others. So, let's <coughs> get up and let's go for a walk. Show people we've nothing to be ashamed of. Are you sure? I am. Come on. What her husband did to Maka. She's got a point there. I'd be keeping my head down if I were her. Oh, for crying out loud. Sharon's not done anything wrong, and neither has her Ken, for all we know. Are you calling my Sean a liar? No. <sighs> I know you're upset, sweetheart. But just think about it. This is the same Ken and Sharon we've all known for years. The same lad you went to school with. He wasn't a copper back then, and she wasn't married to one. Look, whether it was Ken or not, the battered mark mean he is a policeman, and so what happened yesterday makes things difficult. Only if we let it. <laughs> Look, I'm not saying that what happened yesterday didn't happen. There's no doubt some of them police were brutal, vicious. What is it exactly that you're trying to say, though? Just because Kenneth wears the uniform doesn't mean to say that he's one of the bad ones. Everything we know about him tells me he isn't. You can think what you like. My Sean saw what he saw. But just suppose he got it wrong. <coughs> Paul didn't seem to see it like that. Oh, well, if Paul doesn't see it like that, then that's it then, isn't it? So what's that supposed to mean? Oh, come on now, Brenda. You know that you're Paul and Sharon go way back, so Cotty's going to be on her side. Oh, for goodness sake, grow up. Don't talk to me like that. Like what? Like I'm a child! Well, stop behaving like one then! I'm not! I'm just saying what's bloody obvious! Your Paul will stick up for Sharon, and Sharon will stick up for Ken! I might own time! You are, Donna. You're exactly right. At least, I don't know about Paul. He can speak for himself. But I'll stick up for Ken. Stand by him no matter what. So you are right. And you better get used to it. Sharon, Sorry, Pat, but can I just say this? I had a good mind not to come down here tonight. Jackie said you'd come with me, didn't you, Jackie? I did, but then... But I said no. I'd come on my own, and there's a good reason for that. I am my own woman first. Ken's wife second. I joined this group because I, <coughs> me, Sharon Jackson, wanted to help. Not because I'm a minor's wife, or a minor's daughter or sister, but because I believe those who need support deserve support. And if I can't do that through this group, then I'll find a way to do it on my own. So, let me know where I stand, please, Pat. Not now, I'm going. But once you've all had time to talk about it, let me know, will ya? Well, what do we think? I know what I think. Anyone else? Pat, can I say something? You can, you're one of us now. That's kind of you to say so, but I'm not really, however much I'd like to be. 
I'm a supporter, yes, but not a proper part of the Silverton community, not like Sharon. And the thing about this community that a lot of people don't understand is exactly what that community means. A lot of people have neighbours, people they live next to, help at times. But I've never been anywhere like this before, where the people feel like they belong together, need each other, help each other no matter how hard it gets. And I think, for what it's worth, that if there's one thing that's got to be here when the strike ends, because it will end, it's this community, because it's worth so much, it's precious, it's strong, and those in power want to divide it, see it fall apart under pressure, just like they wanted the miners in Nottinghamshire to keep on working. And I think if this group pushes Sharon, who has done nothing wrong, away, excludes her, then we're doing exactly what the government wants. I'm sorry, I've gone on too long, but... Oh, you well, don't need to apologise, love. What you said needed saying. Some people can't see the wood for trees. And I, for one, will make Sharon feel welcome. As will I. Anyone else? Well, I'm not so sure. Me neither. I'm damn sure that she keeps coming to these meetings. I will not be. I'm not going to sit here with a copper's wife, not after the way they cheated my husband. It would be like sitting here with a scab. Oh. oh. For goodness sake, just listen to yourself, Donna. Sharon's not a scab. How can you possibly think that? Because I do, and you will not make me think any differently. Not you, nor you with your fancy little words. I'm sorry, love, I know you mean well, but you're not from around here, so you should probably just keep out this. Donna! No, Pat, I'm off. You can tell me what you decide later. Fine. Wendy, Tracy. You're gonna think about it, Pat. I'll tell you later. Right. Let's leave it there, then. Meanwhile, let's think about those who might need our help, which is what we came for in the first place. We'll sit down, shall we? Penny for him. For what? Penny for your thoughts. They're not worth it. You went to the meeting? Yes. And? And what? How were they? Oh, exactly as you'd expect. Pat, the mum, <coughs> lovely. Donna, the others, the opposite. Things will calm down. Will they? Are you sure? It's I'm not. It's early days. Give them time. I'm not sure I want to. What do you mean by that? I'm not sure I want to give them time. Time to do what? Time to decide I'm all right. Decide my husband's not a leper. Decide not to sneer or scowl or pretend they haven't seen me or they're too busy to say hello. What's the alternative? Leave. Leave if I could. And would you? If you could? I think so. Oh, I don't know. I wish you could, Sharon. I wish you could. But I wish all kinds of things. I wish I could turn the clock back and do all the things I promised you I'd do before I left. So you wouldn't be here. Don't, Paul. <clears throat> you wouldn't be here because you'd be somewhere else. Don't, Paul. Don't. I'm not going anywhere with you. Because... Because you don't want to? Because... Because I don't want to want to. Four years ago you would have. Four years ago? It's four years ago, Paul. Things are different now. I'm different now. Not to me. But I am to me and that's what matters. But... Stop, Paul. Stop. You shouldn't be saying any of this and I shouldn't be listening. I'm going. There's a man at work, a good friend of yours, Paul, who I love, who needs me now more than he ever has done. <coughs> so let's just forget you've said what you've said. Forget how we might have felt. Forget what we might have done. And let's just live life now, here, today. See you around. As we stood there in the line, a continuous stream of missiles came from the pickets into the police line. 
As we stood there in the line, a continuous stream of missiles came from the pickets into the police line. As we stood there in the line, a continuous stream of missiles came from the pickets into the police line. Thank you. You wanted to see me, sir? I did, Kenneth. I did. It's about your statement. It's in the event. It's all agreed. Got it here. Is there a problem, sir? Yes, Kenneth. There is. It's not beat about the bush here. You'll remember the briefing. I do, sir. So you remember, we made it clear that all statements should contain certain wording around missile throwing, etc. Yours, yours does not. And it does include a reference to what some might call police brutality. I just wrote what I saw, sir. I'm sure you've written an account of what you think you saw, Kenneth. But it conflicts with accounts written by a number of your colleagues. In fact, some might say it undermines their statements. Surely not your intention. Not my intention, sir. I just wrote what I saw. As I said, what you think you saw, Kenneth. Leave it there for now. Give you time to think about it. Maybe have a chat to one to your colleagues. See if they can jog your memory. Can you do that? Yes, sir. If you say so, sir. I do, PC Jackson. I do. Thank you. Thank you, sir. sent up to think about my statement. What do you mean, think about your statement? I told you they suggested, except it wasn't a suggestion, was it? That we all said certain things about what happened. Well, I didn't. I just wrote what I saw. I should hope so. You did right. Might have done right. I'm not sure I've done sensible either. So I've been sent home to think about my statement. And when I got home, this was shoved through the letterbox. Well? Well what? Is it true? <coughs> you and Paul? You've been seeing him? Yes, I've seen him. What? Just the two of you? You never said? No, I didn't. Why? Did you think I'd think something was going on? No. Then why didn't you say anything? Because, because I thought you had enough on. Enough to worry about. And is this something for me to worry about? Is you seeing Paul something for me to you worry about? You shouldn't have to ask that, Ken. But I have, Sharon. And I'd like an answer. <sighs> Look, I'm not stupid. I always knew I was kind of a second choice. Oh, no, Sharon. Let me finish. Before he left, we all thought you two were nailed on to end up with each other. And when you didn't, the last thing I thought is that you'd end up with me. But when you did, I thought I was the luckiest man alive. I still do. But, and this, this is a big but this Sharon. I want you to be with me because you want to be with me. Not. Not out of duty or pity, but because you want to. Because I want you to be happy. And if you'd rather be somewhere else, with someone else you feel more for than you do for me, then you should go. There. I've said my bit. And whatever you say now, let it be the truth. The whole truth and nothing more. Right. The truth. I have met with Paul a few times for a chat, nothing more. Yes, I do still feel something for him, but it's not what I feel for you, Ken. It's not the same. It's like a memory almost. Like 
That feeling you get when you remember a time when you were younger. A holiday, a Christmas. Like a really old song you used to like that somehow brings back vague memories of the past. And Paul, is it like that for him? Paul's different. He's, he's a bit confused, I think. He says coming back here has been different. Part of him wants to be here, but most of him doesn't. He's leaving. Did he ask you to leave with him? No. What you said before, if you could leave Silverton, you would. With you, Ken. With you, I can promise you that. If I leave, it's because I'm leaving with you, my husband, who I love. Where you go, I go. Side by side, Ken Jackson. Side by side.
Uh, will you take me for a walk? I will. I will. to us, gifts. We got quite a bit from abroad. Germany, Belgium, France, which was a lovely thing to think that somebody in another country was taking the time to think about us. In some ways it was the best Christmas I can remember. Christmas as it ought to be. I'm going back. Don't. Don't you? Stick it out a bit longer, eh? Please. I can't. Tracy's pregnant. I can't see her do without. Well, we could all be back soon, though, Jim. Oh, he's right. We're not going to win this. We'll all be back soon enough, so stick it out till then, eh? I've told you I can't. Look, I've done my best. I don't want to be a scab. I hate myself for it. But I'm going back. For Tracy. But Jim, we've been friends forever. Oh, we still can be. No. No. Fuck. We can't. We just, we just can't. I'm so, so sorry, Jim. So am I, Nick. So am I. <laughs> time to get his confidence back after what he'd been through. And even though he's quite clear it wasn't Ken that hit him, there's still them as won't speak to Ken or Sharon. She's not sung at welfare since. So she's damned if she's going to give them a chance to turn their back. Oh, I reckon they'll leave when they can. Such a shame the way these things happen. Anyway, I think that's all for this week. Well, this year, my love. Oh, except. Oh, Mrs. Perkins has lost a cat. Again. And listen to this. She put up this notices as she does on trees and lampposts. Has anybody seen my cat? And on one of them. Karen. Always up for a laugh. Had crossed out cat and wrote pussy. Well, I know I shouldn't laugh, but I had to. So did Mrs. P when I told her. She said, Chance of me a fine thing. I said, What about your Harry? Him, she says. Not bloody likely, he's forgotten where to look. Oh, 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 oh. <coughs> She's a good one, is Mrs. There is one more thing before I go. 
It's quite a big thing, really, and I wasn't quite sure I was ready to tell you about it. But here goes. I'm thinking of selling shop. Not now, but for in a year or so. I've decided it's time to do something else with my life. Move on a bit. I suppose it's been part of this woman's group that's made me think about all sorts of things I've never used to think about before. So, I want to learn more. I want to read more about society, politics, and all them big things that I always thought were somebody else's business. And nothing to do with a shopkeeper from a little pit village in South Yorkshire. So, I'm thinking of going back into education. You know, do a course. Jackie says there's lots I can do. And she'll help sort me out. She's a good lassie's Jackie. I can't help thinking her and our Paul could do worse for themselves. Not that I'd say anything, of course. Say anything about Oh, I'm crying out loud. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. In here of all places, creeping up on me. Sorry. Oh. I didn't mean to disturb you. So, you still come here every week? Every Sunday afternoon, three o'clock sharp. Don't like to be late. You mean you don't want to keep Dad waiting? Him? <laughs> don't be daft. How does it going to matter to him? No, it's me. I've been here at three o'clock every Sunday afternoon for the four years since your dad died. It's part of life. As you know, we always used to go for a walk on a Sunday afternoon. Talk about things that had happened week before. We wouldn't happen week after. I suppose it's just helped to keep doing it. Though it's a bit of a one-sided conversation nowadays. Always was, according to Dad. Oh, you're cheating me! <laughs> Mum. Spit it out. What? I said, spit it out. I know you. You've got something on your mind. But I guess I'd say <coughs> you were leaving. How did you know? Do you mind? What sort of a question's that? Of course I mind. Having you here is lovely. Untidy. But lovely. So you going's hard, of course it is. But having you here, knowing you want to be somewhere else. Well, that's harder. You know I hate hurting you. I know you do, Paul. But you mustn't fret. You've got your own life to lead somewhere else. And just thinking of you doing that gives me such such joy, such a warm feeling. You don't have to be always with someone to feel their love for you. I've got used to that with your dad. And I'm getting used to it. It's a pleasure. It's always been a pleasure. 
Me and your dad said adopting you were one of the best decisions we ever made. Without you, there'd have always been something missing. So thanks for coming up here. So where are you thinking of going? Oh, uh, I thought I'd travel. Maybe see the world for a bit. Oh, I'll well, say hello to it from me. <laughs> you can do that for yourself. You can visit me wherever I end up. Oh, is that before or after I've been to London? Look, let's worry about the future when it gets here. For now, let's go home and have a cuppa. There's something I want to talk through with you. What? I'll tell you when we get home. Come on. <coughs> to what your responses might possibly be. <coughs> Thank you. I wondered if it might be in some small way helpful were I to go through them with you. Indeed it would, Mr. Secretary. <coughs> Shall I perhaps ask the questions? What a jolly good idea. I believe they call it role play. I believe they do, Prime Minister. So, fire away, Mr. Interviewer. Well, hello, Mrs. Thatcher. Hello, Mr. Interviewer. Mm -hmm. Prime Minister, has anything been resolved by this long and bitter dispute? I believe the overwhelming majority of miners want to go back to work, pay off their debts, build up their savings, support their family and rebuild their industry. Good. I like that. It avoids answering the question, yet shows I understand the common people and their priorities. Very good. Next question. <clears throat> Mrs. Thatcher, do you see it in any way as someone winning or losing at the end of this very long strike? If anyone has won, it's the miners who've stayed at work. Good. I like that. It ignores the intent of the question. Could we also <coughs> mention the dockers, the steel workers? How about the whole working people of Britain who kept Britain going? Excellent, Prime Minister. <coughs> one cannot mention Britain enough, one thing. My sentiments, exactly. In fact, we did wonder whether you might like to say there was now the opportunity to put the great back into Great Britain. Really? I think not. Uh, Rather <coughs> tacky. One must remember one is Prime Minister, not a headline writer for a tabloid newspaper. Indeed, Prime Minister. My apologies. Don't apologise. You're not the first, nor I suspect the last, to confuse the two. Of course, Prime Minister. And may I be so kind as to offer my congratulations. The nation is, I believe, in your debt. Thank you. You may go. My debt. Ended and the miners marched back into work. At 
some coilery, women handed out carnations, a flower that stands for heroes, and families all marched back together. significantly above the national average. The strike changed our communities and those within them. Bob took early redundancy once the strike was over. After some time out of work, he got a job as a bus driver. He still compares at the miners' welfare, still tells the same jokes. Brenda did as she said she would. She took some part-time courses to get the qualifications she'd never had. She got a place at university and worked in further education and the University of the Third Age. Sean returned to work after being released from custody. Out of work for five years, he was made redundant by 1987. He and Donna divorced because he found out he had mental health issues. He continues to live alone. Jackie stayed in Silverton and became very much part of its community. She helped run the shop so that Brenda could study. She gave up journalism, choosing instead to get involved in a number of activist groups. Jim worked in two pits that closed, took redundancy and eventually found work as a postman. His childhood friend, Mick, never spoke to him again. Once a scab, always, always a scab. scab. Ken stuck at it with South Yorkshire Police, eventually rising to the rank of sergeant. He was at Hillsborough in 1989. He resigned six months later. Encouraged by Sharon, he retrained and worked in social services. Ken and Sharon left Silverton to live in Sheffield. They had two children and they were happy. Paul left Silverton, returned regularly to see his mother. He traveled extensively drawn to areas of conflict, eventually becoming a Channel 4 correspondent. He remained single. Arthur Scargill became lifetime president of the National Union of Mine Workers, with only 1,800 members by now. He is in dispute with the union leadership about financial matters. <laughs> Margaret Thatcher was ousted as Prime Minister in November 1990. She became a victim of dementia and died aged 87. She was given a state funeral on the 17th of April 2013. While in Hucknall, Nottinghamshire, former mine workers held a minute silence to mark the death of their community. <laughs> The All Grief, Truth and Justice campaign wants a public inquiry into the events of June 18, 1984. On the 1st of November 2016, Amber Rudd, the Home Secretary, <laughs> rejected this, saying it wasn't in the national interest. 
The campaign goes on.